You're welcome to Soft Sports. Uh, my name is Sasa P, and I have um, Evo Sam, who is an Arsenal fan. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I had to introduce him as an Arsenal fan because um, today we'll be talking about Arsenal alone. Yeah, um, the football club has gone through um, a whole lot in recent times, and um, the most um, recent is um, they stand the risk of not playing in Europe next season. And um, I think it's the first time in 25 years that Arsenal will be out of Europe. Um, as a neutral, it's quite odd not seeing Arsenal play in Europe. So I would like to know what it feels like um, as an Arsenal fan. Um, Ever, Sam, what's happening at Arsenal? What's happening at Arsenal is like, um, it's a sad thing. Um, I don't think I am speaking like an analyst. It's, it's, it's personal to me, so I'm very emotional because I mean, Arsenal is a prestigious football club, yeah. one of the biggest football clubs in the world, and a lot of fond memories, a lot of good things have happened in that club. But at the moment, there's little or nothing good to write home about okay, when um, it comes to Arsenal. Now, I'll, we'll, we'll start with this now. Last season, um, Arsenal had um, a bad form when it, come, when it came to the league and performance yeah. and also Europe. But um, somehow, they managed to... Um, the victorious in the FA Cup, mm. and we all thought, okay, um, the victory in the FA Cup would just, you know, catapult them into success. You know, yeah. just give them that momentum they needed. I mean, giving them yeah. Obama Young a new contract, players like Bukayo Saka, new contract, Martinelli. Mm. You know, the um, the, the the light was just so bright for Arsenal, but somehow they still managed to be inconsistent. Now, what's the real issue? You know, is it a thing of mentality? Is it lack of players, or what? What is really going on? Because Personally, I thought Arsenal would kick up from there because they managed to beat big sides like Liverpool, Chelsea, yeah. Man City. I mean, Sheffield United were also a good side at that time. And they won the games, you know, in a very pragmatic way, but at least they saw the games through. So, what really happened? Um, what has happened this season, it's a proof that the FA Cup win was more of a fluke. Because, you know, when a new manager comes into a new club, there's always that uh, reaction from the players okay. and all that. And so, But when the honeymoon period is over, to get back to reality so um we're talking about what has happened at arsenal it's a combination of all those things you have mentioned players mentality the quality of the players the quality of the manager on ground yeah. um most importantly the owners um no matter uh, football club the way you want to run a football club if you don't have real passion for that football club if your aim is not to make that football club great uh, then you won't get the desired result. I mean, we've seen owners of different football clubs mm -hmm. doing everything possible to make sure the club succeed. But the owners at Arsenal, okay, uh, unfortunately, don't look like they have interest in right. any of those things. Now, talking about the owners, um, the son of um, Stan Kroenke, yeah, Josh, Josh Kroenke, I remember him coming out to say last season that the Arsenal fans should be excited. You know, I mean, they really invested in a way, you know, yeah. signing the um, likes of Nicolas Pepe for like 70 million, you know, I know Nicolas Pepe wasn't a bad player when he was in France. Yeah. Lucas Torreira wasn't a bad player when he was in Sampdoria. Mm -hmm. You know, the other players were not, they are not that bad. I mean, like how they are being reflected when it comes to the standings on the league. So, what is really happening? Uh, it's one thing to invest, uh, it's another thing to invest properly. I think they may have invested a little bit for the past few seasons or thereabout, but have they invested this money in the right way? Mm -hmm. That's another thing. I mean, let's take Liverpool for example. Jogan Club came, they have invested, but they have invested in the right players. Okay. He was patient enough to get the right players. And these players came in and did wonders. Some of the players they invested their money were just players who were on the verge of relegation or players who were even relegated. Yeah. But the most important thing is that they scouted the right players, the players that fit the philosophy on Jogan Club. And at the end of the day, the result was there for everyone to see. But at us now, the players they have scouted, do they really fit? I mean, Una Emery left, and after he left, he complained about some of the players that he preferred, um, he wanted uh, Zaha. Zaha, but he got Pepe. He wanted, was it uh, Fabino or Nzunzi, but he got Torreira. And so when issues like that comes up, you need to know that there's something somewhere that is not really working. And that's why we're always tracing it back to the men behind the scene. You can own a club, but you need to have the right men. Men that have track records, good track records mm. in football managing, in scouting. And then, let's talk about the managers themselves. Did they get the right manager? When you have a man like Asan Wenger, 
been in the club for about 22 years and you want to replace him, you need to think deep. Okay. You need to think deep. You need to bring managers that can stand, look at the players face to face and tell them the reality. And you think Not, Emery, Emery wasn't someone like that? I don't think Emery had that kind of profile. I mean, he's going to the Europa League final again. That's his specialty. When it comes to Europa League, we know that. But we're talking about a club that have been in the Champions League for about 22 years in a row. You know, So you will need somebody, a well-established manager, someone who can come and influence a lot of things in the club in general, not just the player. Okay. I want to also not exonerate Asenwenga from this issue because I know he has been a great manager the best manager Arsenal ever had. But okay. towards the tail end of his career at Arsenal, I think we started observing things that were not um, very, very good. So, so, so you, see him, you see him as part of the problem too? Yes, I think he played a little bit of it, but uh, he's been away from the club too long for we to be bringing him back as part of the problem. We we're supposed to have gone through the necessary transition period All right. and then moved to the next All right. level. Now, um, as Avenger has been away, yeah. let's talk about the person in charge now, Mikel Ateta. You've talked about bringing in someone who is um, experienced and all, but now Arsenal went all out to get a rookie yeah. in Mikel Ateta now. Um, he won the Community Shield and the FA Cup. Okay, it's good for his CV though. Yes. But consistently, it has been bad. Yeah. It has been bad. Uh, for me, Mikel Arteta looks like a, a cup manager. I remember a game we lost at the Emirates. It was against Aston Villa and a uh, national legend, um, Tony Adams, made mention of it that Arteta looks like a cup manager. Those managers that knows how to manage and scale through uh, two-legged ties, you know, they will get through the quarter-final, semi-final, they will come out on tops and all that at the end of the day. But when it comes to the league, Arsenal have been peaceful. Arsenal have been nothing to write home about this season in the league. Do they get the right manager? I don't think so. The idea behind Ateta was probably looking for an Arsenal man, you know, somebody who knows the club in and out, somebody who could actually get to the academy, somebody who could actually get to other areas of the club. But for me, uh, if you want me to assess Mikel Ateta after 16 months yeah. in charge, it's a no-no for me. I don't think he has done enough. I don't think he deserves to continue wow. and all so, that. All. So, so you want him out here? Yeah? I want him out. Simple as that. Okay. Um, now, Arsenal brought him in. You said something. Um, for someone who knows the club, the academy and all. But if you even check it, um, there are very few players who have come up the ranks. I mean, Smith Rowe was even playing in when um, Emery was there. Yeah. He actually was injured. He yes. had a back injury and shoulder injury. Yeah. And also, um, Saka was even brought in by... Um, so... Um, Ateta himself hasn't really brought anyone from the academy. Not at he? all. Not at all. I think that's what we're talking about. The club felt like being an insider, these are some of the things we'll count on him. But unfortunately, the opposite has been the case. I mean, he went as far as bringing players 39, 30, 29, 30 years and above, the likes of William, the likes of Cedric. And then, if you give the amount of, uh, of games that you have given to William to a younger player, it will, be, it will be easy for you to assess if that player is good enough to be at Arsenal okay. or not. That's the kind of investment that I would have expected of him to do. But unfortunately, the reverse has been the case. Now, do you think if he had stuck with the youth um, um, players, although actually Arsenal have been driven by youth players yeah. so far this season, but if he had used more of the youth player, do you think he would have been under much scrutiny? I don't think he would have been under much scrutiny. I mean, the, the youth players are the ones who, to some extent, saved his job some months ago. Because before that Chelsea game, the lots, a, a lot of fans have been crying for the younger players to be given a chance. He never gave them a chance. It was all about William and all those things. It didn't work out. But the players that saved him, when he brought in Martinelli, brought in Smith Rowe and Saka into the team, there was a change. There was a, a, a breath of fresh air. And those young lads were outstanding against Chelsea. That was a turning point for the season. We all thought from there it was going to be uh, forward, forward, forward. But somehow, being the man that he is, I don't know, everything went All right, through. all right. Uh, right now, um, um, there's a player called Folarim Balogun. Balogun yeah, yeah, he got a contract. And um, a long term contract. And um, there are rumors that um, Lacazette will leave. And also, rumors coming in freshly that uh, maybe Pierre Emerick Aubameyang may also leave. Now, um, with Arsenal not being in Europe, do you see them just, you know, sticking with these younger players and then building, you know, bringing back the fundamentals and all? Or do they um, offer a player like Lacazette an extension in his contract 
and also hold on to Obama Young and see how they can integrate the younger players, mixing them with these um, older players? Well, I really don't know what is in the minds of the owners. Uh, first of all, Mikel Ateta has granted about three interviews after the uh, Europa League defeat and has been talking about being ruthless and all that. And so when you when you talk about being ruthless, that means you're probably saying sell most of these players, bring new players and all that. But if the club wants to be ruthless, they will start that ruthlessness from him himself. You... And so if you want to move <laughs> okay. forward, the first thing to do is to discuss, do we think this man has done enough to continue? And which you don't For think? For me, I don't think so. And so where do we go from here? These young players that we're talking about, some of them have been given a contract. You'd expect them to have been a little bit involved. I mean, like I said, was out. Um, Aboma Yang was out. But even at that, Balogun could not make the bench. We've had a lot of players struggling in defense. Sebahos has been very poor this season. And then he has been on and off. Even Pate, who I think is a top quality player, hasn't been in that form. good. You know, you would expect a player like Miguel Aziz to have been given a game or two, you know, to assess these players. But he hasn't done that. And you're here talking about ruthlessness. So where do we even start from? How, how, how do we become ruthless when you yourself have not really shown okay. ruthlessness by standing the old players aside and giving some of the younger players well, a chance? Well, uh, you know, um, I'll pick an example from one of the London clubs, Chelsea, mm. who are now in the Champions League final. Yeah. And also, they just beat Man City recently. You know, they have been fantastic since, yeah, they, right, since right. the arrival of um, Thomas Tuchel. Yeah. Uh, there's a way they manage in that club. Yeah. I mean, they won their first European trophy, mm -hmm. Champions League, mm -hmm. with an interim manager. Yeah. Their Europa League was also with an interim manager, Benitez. Benitez. Now, they are used to sack and hire, sack and hire. Now, they don't care. The only thing on their minds is how to win. But Arsenal, I think they just want to be all about stability. They just want to go all over the Asavenga trend again. That's yeah. why they're trying to give Mikel Arteta more time, more time. Let's give him more time to see how things work. Um, should the fans just stay back and accept that this is who our club is and just let's be okay with this? Or should they no. continue to come out in their full force and protest? They have to continue. I mean, you can't see failure and just accept it and go back and rest and say, let's continue like that. Some of the clubs that are... The likes of the Nottingham Forest, Leeds United, they, it was like this. They were big clubs before now. And when things did go their way, probably they felt like we will come back and they rested. And before they, you knew what was happening. Out. So the, the, the fans need to keep working. Needs to keep, if it means protest, whatever the fans need to do, as long as it's not violent, as long as it's not out of order, as long as whatever they are doing is not illegal, they need to keep bringing out their voice. They need to keep saying things that they need to say. To make this club move forward, we can't continue like this. This is this is embarrassing. If you look at Arsenal's record this season, it's been nothing short of embarrassment. I mean, Arsenal have failed to score. It's it's. <laughs> How many goals have Arsenal scored at home? Seventeen or eighteen goals at home. Arsenal have failed to score in about ten games at home. Wow. Arsenal have lost as many games as home at home, like as younger. Where will I even start from? Take I mean, hearts. this is embarrassing. Take it's hearts. totally unacceptable. Well, take heart. Um, <laughs> seriously, I just um, can't help but to console you because um, Arsenal, a very big club, popular club, but it's so sad seeing them go down like this. Now, if you were in charge of Arsenal, who would you, what would you change? And if you were to change any personnel, who would it be? The first thing to change um, is the manager. Uh, I don't think all the problem relies on the manager. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But at this stage, after assessing what the man has done for 15, 16 months, I think it's proper that you get him out. Okay, and bring Get who? an established... I mean... Like who? We have managers like uh, Allegri. We have managers like Conte. You have uh, Eric Ten Hag uh, of uh, Ajax. He just won the league once again. He's one of my favorite managers. If you want someone who will continue, uh, who will build this club with a philosophy like Asen Wenger did, Eric Ten Hag is the man. I mean, so, Arsenal is a club that is built just like uh, Barcelona. They are not a club who just gets any kind of manager. They want someone with a philosophy. They yeah. want someone who will come and continue the culture. And so if you want to go back to that uh, as a Wenger kind of management again, Eric Ten Hag right. is the man. So but if you want to change the system now and let's say follow the Real Madrid, the Chelsea, Chelsea. where it is about coming in, winning straight up, then you have the likes of Allegri to look up to. So personally, you have Allegri, you have Ten Hag, yeah. who do you go for? 
Um, I became an Arsenal fan because of the philosophy as in Wenger and all that. So my pick would be Eric Ten Hag. Even if he doesn't win a trophy for two years, but if I see if I see progress, if I see progress, and I'm sure of it. How do you define progress now for Arsenal? Do you define progress First by winning all, trophies or making the Champions League? Trophies will come, but there are things that you will see that you will know that trophies will come. When the uh, um, what's it called, Jurgen Club took over, you could see the direction clearly. Within two, three, four months, you could see their style of play. You could see what he was trying to do. You could see that they needed personnel in some areas. Mm. And so it was easy for him to just replace this, replace this, replace this. And when the time for the trophy will come, it will come. But when you see um, a manager who is neither here nor there playing different formations, today we're trying to play force nine, tomorrow we're playing three at the back, Next day, we are playing 4 4 2 and so on and so forth. And then a manager who just prefers a particular kind of player for no reason whatsoever, whether that player is delivering or not, that player is a player I brought into the club, so he has to play. Then the future doesn't look right. All right. Um, I wish we had more time to just talk and talk because there are so many angles we didn't touch. Yeah. But um, I think we'll leave it here for now uh, because. Um, We've said more sad things than interesting things because truly, yeah, I'm it's sad where Arsenal are at the moment. Um, Eva also, um, once again, accept my. <laughs> should I say accept my condolences? <laughs> no, because, no, 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 no. Because uh, it felt like uh, it felt like a funeral for Arsenal Football Club in a way. Because I mean, three shots on target against Aluna Emery side in 180 minutes, no goal on open play. Wow, wow, that's. No. That's the that's the low of lows. I mean, even for, Chelsea, for, Chelsea under Frank Lampard. For a didn't club have that there. has Lacazette, Aubameyang, Pepe, Saka, Smith Rowe, Odega, Martinelli, it's unacceptable. I mean, Emery didn't have this luxury, but after thirty eight games, he scored about seventy four goals. As Wenger's uh, this last season in charge of Arsenal, he scored uh 76 goals and thereabout but after 33 games we're counting 43 or 44 all right goals. well uh, no. No. um it's it, it's sad it's sad no. but um i only wish for the best for all arsenal fans and arsenal is a football club and i pray they make the right decision rumors of um, um, um daniel Ek i'm um, trying to take over the club we'll see how things pan we'll out in um recent months because we know it's not going to happen in weeks it's going to take months yeah. and um, if possible maybe a year because um, it's a serious thing to do. Um, we'll just see how things go from here. Well, um, thank you for joining us right here on Soft Sports as we've heard from the Arsenal fan, Evaus. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, do well to follow us across all our social media platforms and please um, feel free to um, um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also leave a comment in our comment section. As an Arsenal fan or as a neutral, tell us what you think about Arsenal, what is happening at the club and what should they do to make things better for them. Okay, and if you have some banters, don't worry. Drop your respectful banters, okay, for Evans. Yeah, I can take them. He has been taking them all season. All right, he will survive. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. My name is Asafi, and be safe.